You know what? If we go around right now and ask each and every one of us whether God or Jesus, for that matter, can heal you, a lot of people will say yes, isn't it? But if we go closer, or let's say there's an issue with you, and we say, do you believe that Jesus will heal you? Uh, the person or some people may respond a bit without conviction. Their response will not be that conviction because the belief and the foundation that Jesus heals is not properly grounded. Are we together? And many people know Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior, but few Christians have come to believe and accept Jesus Christ as their healer. Are we together here? And the devil has taken advantage of this ignorance to deceive a lot of people and also to take away their health. We, all of us, basically, in this modern society, we are born and we've come to understand or believe that hospitals are places that you go for when you are sick. And then we hear in the news every now and then, huge government budget allocation for health or health care and health delivery for that matter. So we've been wired by modern situations and modern development to think that sickness and diseases are a natural part of our lives. And that when you are sick, the place you run to is the hospital. We thank God for medical advance, advancement. We thank God for hospitals. But the truth is that Jesus Christ is your healer. Amen. Hallelujah. And in redemption, he has made provisions for your health and your healing. There are two things, provisions for your health and your healing. When you become born again, please understand this. God is not only interested in your soul and your spirit. He's also interested in the wellness of your body. That is why in 3 John 2, 3 John 2, the Bible says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and have good health, even as your soul what? Prospers. So your health and your wellness is of importance to God. And what most of us don't know is that God is interested in in your healing. In other words, healing is the will of God. So that's why in the Old Testament, the Bible says, I am the Lord that healeth thee. I am the Lord that heals you. This morning, if you are sick in any part of your body, the power of God is present here. Amen. The Bible says in Luke chapter number 5, verse 17, that as Jesus Christ was teaching, the power of God was present to heal. The same power is present here. Amen. Wherever you are not feeling well, just put your hands there. As the teaching is going for, it's a healing service. It's a, we can't preach healing without the healer working. It's somebody here. Please be very sensitive. Be very, very sensitive. So I'm speaking to you on healing in redemption. Healing in redemption. And our anchor scripture this morning is taken from Matthew chapter number 8, verse 16 through to 17. Matthew chapter number 8, verse 16 through to 17. And KJV, please, unless I speak of KJS. 
Let's take our reading. When evening had come, they brought to him many who were demon-possessed. If the Bible you are holding is yours, or the iPad or the phone you have your Bible on, highlight the word they brought. They brought to him many who were demon-possessed. And he cast out the spirits with a word and healed all who were sick. Underline, heal all who were sick. That it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah, the prophet, saying, He himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. May the power of God rest upon his holy reading this morning. Hallelujah. In this scripture, Matthew is giving us a picture of the healing ministry of Jesus Christ. And now the first part of the scripture in verse 16 describes how Jesus went about healing and deliverance. And the Bible says he healed all the people that were brought to him who were sick. And then the second part, which is verse 17, it's a fulfillment of a prophecy that has been given by prophet Isaiah in Isaiah chapter 53, verse 5. Isaiah chapter 53, verse 5. So if you look at this scripture, they quoted what Isaiah said. And Isaiah said, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was what? Wounded for our transgression. He was prophesying about Jesus Christ that he paid the price for our health and our what? Healing. There's something we need to understand here. He was wounded for trans transgression is breaking the law. So anytime you disobey the law, it's a transgression. Are we together here? And he said, he was bruised for our iniquities. So he was hurt. He was whipped for all our sins. Iniquity is sin. Are we here? The chastisement for our peace was upon him. Chastisement is the needed punishment. The price that has to be paid for our peace. Jesus Christ paid that price. And the Bible says, and by his stripes, we were healed. So when Jesus Christ was being whipped by those heavy braided whips, and his body was being cut, the price for your health, my health, the price for your healing and my healing was established. Are we together here? Now, so what it means is that the day you surrender your life to Jesus Christ, the day you become born again, the day you become what we call the new creation, you are entitled to benefit or better still, you are entitled to the healing heritage in our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's go back to our anchor scripture, Matthew 8, 16, 17. It's somebody here this morning. Are we getting the foundation clear? Let's do some theological insight. The Bible says, and he healed all who were sick. The first thing I want you to know is that they brought. Jesus didn't go looking for people to heal. They brought the sick to him to heal. So they brought to him many, many who were demon-possessed, among which were the sick. So he did not go about. He, they brought the sick people and then he healed them. Now, healing, healed all who were sick. The, this is a New Testament. The Greek word for healed translates as therapeu, 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 which is the root word for what we know in English as therapy or therapeutic, right? 
Now, when they say somebody, you are going for therapy or therapeutic treatment, is a natural process of healing. We have some doctors here, right? Am I right? Natural process of what? Healing. So, the, when the Bible said Jesus healed them, he made them what? Whole. Are we together? He healed them of all sicknesses. Now, there's a difference between cure and healing. A cure works only on the symptoms of a sickness or disease. But healing virtually wipes away everything concerning the sickness. So when you are healed, you are made whole. He touched me. Oh, he's touched me. And oh, what a joy that floods my soul. Something is happening. And now I know he's touched me and made me whole. When Jesus touch you, when Jesus heals you, he makes you whole. Are we together here? No traces of symptoms of that sickness will be found in you again. So healing is to make you whole. Are we together here? But we need to understand our healing rights and our health in redemption. And the first thing you need to understand is that Jesus Christ paid the price for your health and your healing. The Bible says, himself took our infirmities and bore our what? Sicknesses. Himself took. In other words, he took away, he carried away every body, bodily weakness or any form of weakness in your body. Any form of sickness, Jesus Christ carried it away at Calvary. And then it says, he bore our sicknesses. So every known disease or sickness in this world, Jesus Christ took it upon himself when he was being crucified. Do you know what that means? The price for your Healing, the price for your well-being has already been paid long ago. Now, we don't pay for an item twice, do we do? Except out of ignorance. Can, can you go and buy a watch, for instance, in a shop after you have paid, and then you go back another day and say, uh, count, oh my God, the sales person I'm paying for the thing again. No. Are we together? So it means that in redemption, healing and your well-being has been established. But if you don't know this, there is no way you can appropriate it. Amen. In redemption, Remember, week one, we learned about the fact that we have been redeemed. And that redeemed means you have been bought out of the slave market. Galatians chapter number three, verse 13 through to 14. The Bible says, Galatians 3, 13 to 14. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Having become a curse for us, for it is written, curses everyone who hangs on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. It says what? That the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles. The blessings of Abraham. Part of the blessings of Abraham is your well-being and healing. 
So the day you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you are spiritually connected to these blessings that has been released to Abraham. And healing and your well-being is part of that blessing. This morning, somebody's mind and understanding is being open to the healing heritage in our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now, remember when you become born again, you are a child of God, right? You belong to the heritage of our Lord Jesus Christ. So the Bible says in John chapter number 1 verse 12 that as many as believe in him, to them he gave power to become the sons of what? So when you believe in our Lord Jesus Christ, when you accept Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, you are now a child of God. Romans 8, 6. The Spirit also bear witness with our spirit that we are children of God. So you and I, who are born in redemption, or when we become born again, we are what? Children of God. Did somebody here? Now, there is no sickness in the heritage of children of God. When God created Adam and Eve, there was no incidence of what? Sickness or diseases in the Garden of Eden. So he didn't make what provision for healing then. Up until sin enters into their life. Are we here? So if you are a child of God and you belong to the DNA of Jesus Christ, what you need to understand this morning is that you are not supposed to be sick. It means sickness or disease is illegal in your life. Now, the Bible says, he that is born of the flesh is flesh. And he that is born of the spirit is spirit. John 3, 6. Right? Now, we learn that we are spirit beings, isn't it? Yeah. Have you heard that a spirit is sick before? Is it not the same Bible that told us that ye are gods? In other words, we carry the divine nature of God and we are in the line of God himself. Have you heard about Jesus Christ? When you were reading about Jesus in the New Testament, did you read anywhere that he was sick and he was carried to Kolebu or 37 for treatment, for example? No. What it means is that as a child of God, sickness is not supposed to be your portion. Sickness and diseases, they are illegal in your life. They don't have a place. Hello. It's somebody catching something. So this money, any sickness, whether terminal or temporary, in your life, I come in the name of Jesus, and I cast that sickness in the mighty name of Jesus. It's illegal. Tell somebody, sickness is illegal in your life. You see, this faith that we are in, it's about knowledge, understanding. If you don't know this, you see sickness are what? Natural. It's part of life, isn't it? But the truth is that if you call yourself a child of God, sickness is not permitted in your life. Hallelujah. When you have been saved, listen carefully. You have been raised together with our Lord Jesus Christ. And you are seated what? Last week we learned it far above. Far above, isn't it? Ephesians chapter number 2, verse 4 or 6 there about. He says, when we are born again, we have been raised together with our Lord Jesus Christ. In heavenly places. Now, in Ephesians chapter number 1, verse 21, 2021, we know that that heavenly places is far above principalities, far above what powers, far above dominion. I have good news for you this morning. Yeah. 
because you are seated in heavenly places. You are far above malaria, far above COVID-19, far above tuberculosis, far above any form of sickness. You are seated far above. It means sickness is not supposed to be part of your life. You are in heavenly places. Have you read in the Bible that in the heavens or in the heavenly place, there was COVID-19 there? No. Tell somebody, I am seated far above sickness. I'm seated far above diseases. I am seated far above any demonic possessions. Yes, yes. Get this into your mind. Get this into your understanding. It will build your faith against sickness. Somebody didn't hear that. Are we here? And the next thing we need to know is that God has made provision for the Holy Ghost to quicken your life. God has made provision that any time any form of sickness or bodily weakness, bodily or body weakness comes your way, the power of the Holy Ghost is supposed to quicken your life, empower your life, make your life more alive. Romans 8, 11, the Bible says, if the Spirit that raised our Lord Jesus Christ from the dead, if that same Spirit dwells in you, that same Spirit will quicken your mortal body, will quicken your mortal body. The Spirit 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 will quicken your mortal bodies through His Holy Spirit. King James. To quicken means to bring life. It means to heal. It means to bring the Zoe life back to you. So this morning, if you are sick in any part of your body, by the power of the word of God and by the Holy Ghost, I pronounce quickening power into your life in the name of Jesus. Hello. This is the word of faith. Hear this one. When you become born again, you have what we call the Zoe life of God. The divine kind of life. And that life is immune to sickness. Immune means it is resistance. It resists what? Sickness. When Jesus Christ said, John chapter 10, verse 10. The thief cometh not, but for to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But I have come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. I have come. I have come. I have come that they may have life and have it what? More abundantly. That life Jesus is talking about is the Zoe life. The divine kind of, that life does not know sickness. That life is the nature of God. So, Satan came to kill you with sickness. Satan came to destroy you with diseases. Satan came to steal your health. But Jesus says, I have come. I have come as the son of God to give you the Zoe kind of life, and that life does not know sickness. So in redemption, we have the Zoe kind of life. That is why you must tell sickness, you have no portion in my life. I carry the divine nature of God. The Zoe life. Because Jesus says, I am here to give you that life. This morning, I have good news for you. 
If you have never believed that you carry the divine nature of God this morning, by this revelation of the Zoe kind of life, you are being empowered to dominate over sickness. But we need to know three things about sickness. It will help you a lot. Number one, you see, a lot of people out of ignorance, when they fall sick, some people say they are being punished by God. Tell somebody it's a lie. So the number one thing you need to know about sickness, sickness is an oppression from Satan, not from God. Sickness is an oppression from Satan. It is not from God. Acts chapter number 10, verse 38. The Bible says how Jesus Christ of Nazareth was anointed by God and by the Holy Ghost with power. And he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed. Oppressed. He was healing all who were oppressed by the devil. So sickness is an oppression by the devil. Oppression means to take total control of your life. As long as you continue believing that a sickness or disease is from God, your healing will never come. Sickness is an oppression by the devil. Sickness is not from God. Jesus was healing all who were oppressed by the devil. Oppression by the devil. So, Satan is behind malaria. Satan is behind COVID-19. Satan is behind tuberculosis. Satan is behind asthma. Asthma is an oppression by the devil. Malaria, whether it is caused by plasma, mosquitoes, or whatever, it's an oppression by the devil. HIV, whether it is caused by a virus or whatever they call it, it is an oppression by the devil. That is why the names of sicknesses sound very, 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 very hundious. They have so-called medical names for sicknesses. When, when you hear it, you ask yourself, this one can only be a name of a demon. Number two. Sickness is a spirit. Is what? Tell somebody, sickness is a spirit. Luke chapter 13, verse 10 to 11. Sickness is a spirit. The Bible says Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues. And they brought a woman who had a spirit of infirmity, 18 years, and was bent over and could in no way raise herself. The woman had a spirit of infirmity. When you check the Greek word for infirmity, it translates sickness, disease. Right? It means that the woman had a spirit of sickness. A spirit of what? Disease. So behind malaria is a spirit. Behind COVID-19 is a spirit. Behind tuberculosis is a spirit. Behind asthma is a spirit. Behind every tumor is a spirit. So sickness is a spirit. It means when you have any form of sickness in your life, a spirit has been implanted in you. So the Bible says, Jesus Christ was saying, he said, anything my father has not planted must be what? Rooted out. It means that that spirit of sickness that is in you has been planted by the devil. Because sickness is an oppression, for which the devil is behind. 
and a demonic spirit is behind. When that sickness finds its way in your life, it means that the devil, by a spirit of sickness, is oppressing you. Are we together? Don't say this one is a light scratch on my body. It's a spirit of what? Infirmity. Number three. Sickness is a case. Is what? A case. Under the Lord in the Old Testament, sickness is sicknesses and diseases, they are curses. Take me to Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. 21 and then 20, verse 15. Let's look at 15 first. God was talking. He said, but it shall come to pass if you do not obey the voice of the Lord, your God, to observe carefully all his commandments and his statutes, which I command you today, that all these curses will come upon you and overtake you. So from verse 15, the Bible starts to list the curses that will come upon the Israelites if they disobey God, right? Now, let's jump to 21, 20, yeah, 21, 22. The Lord will make the plague cling to you until he, was, he has consumed you from the land which you are going to possess. And the plague is a sickness. The Lord will strike you with consumption, with fever, sickness, with inflammation, boil, with severe burning fever, like malaria, what you call migraine, with the sword, with scorching and with mildew, they shall pursue you until you perish. So sicknesses in the Old Testament, they are cases. Diseases, they are cases. Are we together? But the good news is that in redemption, we are free from these cases. That is why we are told that Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. So you have been redeemed from the curses of sickness. Any form of sickness in your life is illegal. It is illegal. It is the devil implantation. Now we together here. What must you do to appropriate your divine health and healing? What must you do? We are going to look at that. The first thing is to recognize and believe Jesus Christ as the great physician. The great what? Or the healer. In prophecy, Jeremiah chapter number 8, verse 22, the prophet was talking and he says, Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician? Why then is there, is there no recovery for the health of the daughter of my people? Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician? The prophet was talking. Now, fast forward into the New Testament. We saw Jesus Christ as the great physician. Is somebody here? Matthew 9, 10, 13. Matthew 9, 10, 13. Matthew 9, 10, 13. Jesus was seated with tax collectors and sinners. They came and sat down with him and his disciples. Then, let's go. The Pharisees asked him a question. 
Now it happened as Jesus sat at the table in the house that, behold, many tax collectors and sinners came and sat down with him and his disciples. Next verse, please, quickly. You can put all of them on the screen. And when the Pharisees saw it, they said to his disciples, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? When Jesus heard that, he said to them, those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. So here we see Jesus Christ as the great physician. The great healer, the great physician, the great healer. You see, there are people who boast that we have family doctor. You know, in our family, we, 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 we have a doctor. We have a gynecologist. And we have a dentist. It's our family dentist. I see. I have the great physician as my healer. Is somebody here? Now, listen to this. Being the great physician, it means that Jesus Christ is the one that heals and makes you whole. A doctor can only cure, but Jesus will heal you. And that is what he's doing this morning. Amen. So in Luke chapter number 4, verse 18, Jesus Christ announcing his ministry and his mandate on earth he says the spirit of the lord is upon me for he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor look for 18 he has sent me to heal he has sent me to heal he has sent me to heal so the great physician heals the great physician is the master healer the great physician is the most powerful healer on earth. The great physician, no sickness escapes him. That is why in our uncle scripture in Matthew chapter number 8, verse 16 to 17, they say what? All those who were brought to him, he healed all of them. None of them returned the same. So the healing power of Jesus touches everyone. In so far as your faith, your faith comes to his frequency. Are we here? So Jesus did not come only as a savior. He also came as what? A healer. And he's called the great physician. You know, we, 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 when, when you become born again, they will take you through what we call new believers foundation class, isn't it? And in most, of, in most instances, we are taught about salvation, but we hardly are taught about healing. So a lot of people know Jesus Christ as their Savior, but not their healer. This morning, somebody is receiving fresh understanding of that. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Number two, to appropriate your healing, stop nursing sickness Start cursing sickness. Stop nursing sickness and start cursing it. Stop what? You are not a nurse. You are a child of God. Genesis chapter number 12. The Bible says, God was talking, he says, I will bless the one who blesses you. And I'll curse the one who what? Curses you. Do you know what? Sickness is not from God. So it's bound to be what? Cursed. So when that boil comes on your skin next time, you say, I curse this boil in the name of Jesus. I curse this malaria in the name of Jesus. You must put up a fight. First Timothy chapter number 6 verse 12, the Bible says, fight the good fight of faith. James 4, 7, resist the devil and he will flee. Resist the devil. So you must resist that sickness. Don't say, as for this sickness is found in our family, you go to a, hey, next time you go to a doctor, you know, one of the questions doctors normally ask is that, 
Is there a history of this sickness in your family? Say no. Say no. Death and life lies in the power of the tongue. So the very moment you accept it, hey, it is implanted. Hallelujah. Resist that sickness. Resist it. And curse it. Remember that behind the sickness is what it says, spirit, isn't it? So as you are cursing it, it's melting away. Stop nursing sickness. Start cursing. You are not a nurse. It's only nurses who nurse. Hallelujah. <laughs> Is there no bomb in Gilead? Is there no bomb in Gilead? Number three, to get your healing. Your medicine is the word of God. Consume that medicine. Take that medicine. Proverbs 4, 2022. Proverbs chapter number 4, verse 20 through to 22. Consume the word as a medicine. He said, my son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life. Remember, we talked about Zoe life. So the word gives you the divine nature of God. <laughs> huh? You know, these days, when you go to the uh, hospital, they say, take what? Vitamins. Take vitamin X, vitamin Y, vitamin Z, whatever it is. The word is a vitamin. It boosts your immune system, your divine nature. Look at this one. And it says, they are life to those who find them and health, health, health to you, all your flesh. The word of God is medicinal. The word of God is medicinal. As you take it. So, do you know what you have to do? You need to meditate on healing scriptures. I am the Lord that heals you. My father said he will heal me. Therefore, I, I appropriate my healing now in the name of Jesus. God says, if the spirit that raised my Lord Jesus Christ from the dead, if that spirit dwells in me, that spirit is able to quicken my mortal body to life. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, Holy Ghost power, quicken my body. I cast this sickness in the name of Jesus. By the power of the word of God, that says... The word is health unto me this morning. I take my delivery and my healing by force in the name of Jesus. Hello. Psalm 103 verse 2. The Bible lists the benefits that are available to you as a born again. And one of them, God says, he says, my soul will bless the Lord at all times. For he is the one who healed me, verse 3, of all my diseases. Verse 3, please, quickly, verse 3. He heals me of all my diseases. Lord, you said you will heal me of my diseases. Therefore, this sickness is not permitted in my body. I take my delivery by force. In the name of Jesus. Somebody here. So the word is medicinal. Do you know that the word of God can perform surgery on you? Oh, 
Number four, how do you take your healing or appropriate your healing? Take the communion as often as you can. Because in John chapter number 6, verse 56, he says, my flesh is what? Life. My flesh and drinks and my blood abide in, he who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and I in him. So when you take the communion, you are fortifying yourself with the divine nature of God against sickness. You don't need to wait to be sick to take the communion. As you are taking it, the divine nature of God is being duplicated in your life. The life of the flesh is in the blood. Leviticus 17, 11. So the blood of Jesus contained the DNA of Jesus. The blood of Jesus contained the healing powers of God. As you take the blood, you are taking in vitamins. As you take the blood, you are fortifying yourself with the divine nature of God. And your body becomes resistant to any form of disease or sickness. The story is told of one father of faith by name Smith Wigglesworth. He takes the communion every day, every day, every day. Before he goes out, he takes the communion. The man lives above 80 years without any form of sickness known. At age 80, he was still riding horse. You know, those days, horse were the in thing. He was still riding horse, moving from county to county or community to community, preaching the word of God. Don't wait to take the communion once in a month. Prepare your own communion in the house. Bless it. And by faith, you take it. And you are appropriating the divine nature of God in your life. Did somebody hear? Finally, how do you appropriate your healing? Apply the anointing oil. The anointing oil. Mark 6, 12, 13. Apply the anointing oil for instant healing and fortification. Instant what? Look at the word. So they went out and preached that people should repent. And they cast out many demons. And anointed with oil many who were sick and healed them. They anointed many who were sick. And they were healed. And they were healed. The anointing oil is for what? Instant healing. And it fortifies your body against sickness. Hello. It's somebody here. So in redemption, we have our heritage of divine health and divine healing. Divine health in the sense that your body is immune to what? Sickness. Divine healing that when you happen to be oppressed by sickness, Jesus will heal you. It's somebody here. So this morning, know that in redemption, as a born again believer, as a new creation, my healing rights is in our Lord Jesus Christ. 
The price, the Bible says, himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. He took your, the price has been paid long ago. All you need to do is bring alive your faith. All you need to know is who this great physician is. All you need to know is how to appropriate your healing in our Lord Jesus. Shall we bow down our heads?